On the banks of Windermere in the Lake District sits a mill that played a surprisingly key role in this country's textile industry. Originally opened in 1835, Stop Park Bobbin Mill supplied bobbins to thriving local Lancashire cotton mills, and innovations in textiles production at this time propelled this into a highly prosperous region in the Industrial Revolution. I'm Rob Bell, engineer and adventurer, and I'm exploring some of the key locations in England's progress towards more modern methods of manufacturing, engineering and production and the humble bobbin was a vital component in the textiles industry, and it's still in use today with a few modifications. To find out more, I'm meeting Kevin Booth, Senior Curator for the North at English Heritage. Kevin, hi. Rob, nice to see you. What an amazing place this is. <laughs> I mean, absolutely beautiful coming inside seeing all of this. It is a treasure. I feel like I need to get silly questions out of the way first. The one. Can you explain to me exactly what a bobbin is and, and why it was so integral to the textiles industry? Bobbin is one of those. It's basically just a piece of turned wood. It's the thing that is carrying thread around all sorts of different positions in the textile factories of Lancashire. And they, they'd be on every single machine within the textiles industry? Across the country, in particular, if you think of Yorkshire and Lancashire, millions of them, uh, just millions of them required. Well, let's talk about the mill itself. When was it commercially operating? It was first advertised in 1835, but running from 1835 then pretty much continuously through to 1971. Were there other mills similar to this in the local area? We think in the middle of the 19th century, there's anything up to 80 bobbin mills working in the Lake District at any one time, taking advantage really of the local watercourses and using water power to, to drive the line shafting. So there's a reason why this mill is in the site that it is. Absolutely. It's here because of the water, but it's here because of the wood. It's here because of a tradition of coppicing that means you've got ready access to replenishable supplies of wood. Was the mill an integral part of the local community here? Did it benefit the local community? I think in some ways the mill is the local community. The cottages of Finswade, the village, certainly by the later 19th century, are occupied by the bobbin turners and the sawyers. And do we know what the working conditions would have been like in here then for, for those local people? Everything you've ever imagined was shocking about working conditions in Victorian factories, you will find a Stop Park, and that whether it's the dangers of the machinery and the close proximity to line shafts that are rotating at 3,000 revs per minute, to the long hours, to the dust. Do we know much about the machinery and, and, and where that came from? What we're looking at here is largely machinery from the 1870s, though Stott has machinery surviving from its earliest incarnation. Some of the, you know, handheld lathes where you're offering wood up to a tool to be turned, whereas here we're able to use levers and gadgets to bring tools into wood and, and, and make these things en masse. This is local machinery. It's made, engineered by local firms. They're bringing the machinery, the technology on as the demand for these things grows. This was a time of industrialization, using machines to increase the output, to increase profits. Well, you're talking about very skilled men who we can offer those tools up and make these things within a sixteenth of an inch accuracy over and over again mm -hmm. to a point where their role is little more just to move a handle. And the whole thing's becoming much more regimented and it's much more the sort of tick-tock of time, how many can you produce yeah. in an hour, in two hours. So why was Lancashire so instrumental to the textiles industry? That's growing out of using its natural resource and its natural geographic position. Manchester becomes the place where really raw cotton is funneled from across the globe, but particularly, of course, the Americas, into Manchester to be turned onto bobbins like this, into thread, and then shipped back out again for textile production. So the bobbin is this, this small, but absolutely instrumental component within this global industry then. Stott is sending things to Melbourne in Australia. Stott is sending goods to India. 
They have clients who ask for stock park bobbins from across the world. And the machinery, that's going across the world as well. When did English Heritage take guardianship of Stock Park? So it had shut in 71, so we took it on, I think, in 1974. Took 10 years overall to conserve the whole building. Opened again to the public in 84, and we've been making bobbins since. And the thing about Stock Park is, really from 1870 onwards, it doesn't change. They don't modernise, they're not bringing in new machines, they're not changing their working practices. We wanted to capture not just the kind of physical sense of this place, but also the kind of memory of the people who've been here and be able to conjure that again yeah. for the visitors who come through. And what work is being done to, to maintain Stock Park for, for future generations to come and enjoy? It's quite a tricky specimen, Stock. Just imagine what Woodworm wants to do to a place like this. Think about the specialist knowledge that you need to safely run a steam engine, or to know how, how to sharpen tools, or even just to turn the bobbin, to understand wood. You know, for English heritage, it's a real investment of time, it's a real passion, because it is so particular and so special and requires skills that we simply don't require anywhere else across our portfolio. It's a unique thing for us, and it's a unique place nationally. It's so lovely to come and see all this still in operation, Kevin. That's the thing for me as well, because it's great to see it, but when it's, when it's working, you can smell it and hear it all as well. It, it, it's such a fantastic experience. Thank you so much for showing me around. It's been a real pleasure. During the Industrial Revolution, this region of England was teeming with highly profitable textile producing mills, but none of them could operate without this unassuming little item. The bobbin was, and still is today, a vital part of working with a wide variety of materials. And I've learned today just how much a whole industry depended on the Lancashire region. Check the English Heritage website for more details, including opening times, here at Stock Park Bobbin Mill. <laughs>